turnover. Action! So another scene in the adventures of international rescue is shot at the AP Film Studios in Slough, the safety town. Thunderbirds is the brainchild of Jerry and Sylvia Anderson, the most exciting go husband and wife team in the history of filmmaking. Sylvia, the real life Lady Penelope, is directly responsible for the characterization and costumes. How do you decide on the characteristics of your cast? Well, this starts uh, initially in the script stage. Um, my husband, uh, Jerry and myself, um, write the original script so that when we actually put pen to paper, we have a mental image of the character as it should be. And uh, I think we develop it from there. Do you sort of see characteristics in people you know, magazines and this sort of thing? Yes, all the time, all the time. I think, in actual fact, what we do is we take um, a composite face in other words, we take the eyes of someone, nose from someone else, and so on. So we can then produce the perfect face uh, for the character that we've invented. And we don't have to rely on a casting agency to provide us with uh, an actor with a perfect voice, a perfect face, and acting ability. What about the design of the costumes? Well, this, of course, uh, as our series is based on the 21st century and is futuristic, uh, we try to at the least make the uh, costumes contemporary and at the best futuristic. Are you trying to somewhat lead fashion by the costumes of Lady Penelope? Well, we are really, yes, and uh, there will be uh, Lady Penelope dolls and fashions and I hope this will perpetuate the image that we create on the screen. How sort of improbable are they? Do you sort of bring them within the bounds? I think we bring them in the bounds of, um, you know, a very fashion-conscious young lady would dare to wear them, I think, in the present day, but they're still a little outrageous. Super Marionation is a new dimension in adult entertainment, and the actors start here in the puppet workshop under the guidance of Birmingham sculptor John Brown. Heads are first made in plasticine, then moulded in glass fibre, Moving lips and eyes are added, and then the crowning glory, the hair in the latest styles. Each main character has up to five heads with different expressions to suit the mood. The rest of the puppet is made in a plastic and is in the perfect proportion of one-third human stature, with the hands and feet to suit the fitting. Any character can be made up from these interchangeable components. Each dressed puppet costs between 250 and 300 pounds. Often, two units are shooting at once, so an identical twin is made. Of the four film stages used for shooting Thunderbirds, two are for the special effects department under the inventive control of director Derek Meddings. Derek, how do you evolve the futuristic designs of your models? Well, usually I just start doodling on a pad, and uh, whatever happens, uh, that's usually what we get in the time. Sometimes we have to dress them up a bit. What limits do you put on probability? Well, there aren't any limits as far as we're concerned. We try anything, and uh, if it doesn't work, then we usually cut round it. But uh, nine times out of ten, they work. Uh, there isn't any, as far as we're concerned, nothing is impossible in the special effects. How many special effects go into a, an episode? Well, they vary. Some, uh, mostly, they're around about 90 per hour. Some, you know, they range up to 105. We've had as many as 130 in a, in a film. And uh, then we've really got problems. What are your greatest problems in the effect line? Anything that flies. Because it's always the wires, losing the wires against cloud and blue sky. So we have to, uh, well, we have secret little ways of doing it. And I'd rather not say how it's done. How do you maintain such realism? Well, we do little things that I think people don't, uh, they're not aware of when they look at a vehicle. But if a vehicle goes through screen, then we do a dust trail behind it. So there's always a certain amount of dust coming from a, uh, the back of the truck or lorry, car, whatever it is. And then we have all the wheels sprung independently so that they get this movement and they don't just bounce up and down like a toy. And shooting at high speed, around about 72 frames, and sometimes as much as 120. That's as opposed to 
24. Which is a normal yes, film frame. Yes, but we can't shoot at 24. Not, there's very few shots we can do at 24 on the special effects. Mm -hmm. Even if we shoot water, we always have to shoot at 72 frames so that it slows it down just that right amount to give us the realism again. Boats, things like this, we use um, little um, gadgets on the back that give us the wake. These are the things, if they're not there, people know that something's wrong with the shot and they're not really sure what it is, but if it's there, they just accept it. It's just like using any other, or just like watching any other boat going through picture. When you were a boy, were you fascinated by explosions? Yeah, I'm very destructive by nature. <laughs> I think that's why I'm in the special effects. Backstage, there's a vast empire of scenic design and model making. Everything is custom designed and built to scale. Houses, spaceports, Thunderbird craft, vehicles down to guns and watches. After use, they're either stored for the future or scavenged for new creations. All the models are identically reproduced in various scales to suit the scene, and a perfect continuity must be maintained. It's a model maker's paradise, spoiled only by the dirtying down process needed to give realism. Every kind of material is utilized, and the ingenuity of the operatives is endless, a great challenge that adds to the appeal. The puppets work on the sets under blistering arc lights ten times stronger than normal, and their actions are controlled by 12-foot wires from above. Tell son, if you get settled down for the night. Gosh, Dad. Well, the pre-recorded dialogue is fed through a lip-sync machine and the word impulses are transmitted to a solenoid in the character's head, causing the lips to move in perfect time with its voice. This near-realism is synonymous with all the work done by the AP film team of over 100. The series is shot in full Eastman colour and is already being shown in Canada, Australia, Holland and Japan. But what is the adult appeal? The best man to answer this is Thunderbird's creator, Jerry Anderson. Well, of course, this is a, this is a question I would like to know the answer to because we, we very much want the films to have ad adult appeal. Uh, I think that it's probably the technical fascination of seeing model characters and model machines um, behave in, in a realistic way on the screen. I think it is the wonderment, much the same way as with the Disney cartoons, one looked at animated figures and you know, couldn't believe that they, in fact, weren't real. And of course, I think from the point of view of creating fantasy, it, it is important to uh, make fantasy as believable as possible so that it is acceptable. This is what we try to do. What of the future? Live actors? Well, this is, this is a difficult one to answer. It's a question we ask ourselves at least once a week. Uh, I would very much like to make films with live actors, but of course the problem is that with live actors you have to accept their faces as they are. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it would be quite as simple to get the strong characters that we succeed in getting in our films. And, of course, there would be many difficulties in creating the sort of situations we create at the moment with live artists, but I think one day, yes, we hope so. Whether the actors are human or puppets, Thunderbirds adds up to a unique contribution to world entertainment. Thunderbirds are go. FAB 